I'm Sean Scaife, and these are the physics of parkour. Parkour is made up of a lot of different moves. For example, the wall flip. A wall flip is a special flip where the tracer, someone who does parkour, runs up a wall and back flips off of it. The way this works is whenever you push on a wall, the wall is going to push back and gravity is going to want to pull you down. So you need a force that's going up and that force is friction. Friction is defined as mu being multiplied by the normal force. And mu, in this case, is going to be this rubber on concrete, which is nearly one, which is excellent. So the higher the friction is, the higher you're going to go. And the other part of a wall flip is a back flip. And the way that works is the tighter you tuck, the faster you're going to spin. And as you're pushing off that wall, you're going to be going backwards. You see in a wall flip, I didn't really tuck that much. That's because the force of friction is already pushing me up, so I'm getting extra height. And if I were to tuck, I would over rotate so badly that I might land on my back. It's a healthy balance, either you tuck too much or you don't tuck enough. Now over here I'm going to show you the roll, another important aspect of parkour that if not done correctly can actually hurt the tracer as he does it. Tracers use rolls to prevent injuries when jumping from tall heights. If a tracer were to jump and land with his leg locked and did not roll, it's essentially a collision. And the way to reduce the amount of force in a collision is by lengthening the amount of time it takes for the two objects to come to a stop. My buddy Nathan here will demonstrate. A few tricks tracers use to roll. First, they roll over their shoulder, which creates a smoother motion so that you're not applying too much force to one area at the bottom. The other trick they use is see how this is a right triangle, and if he rolls from his shoulder to his hip, you're lengthening the amount of time because the hypotenuse is always longer than it takes for him to come for a stop. And that's how it's done. Now we're going to talk about the physics of the vaults. Let's head inside. Tracers use vaults to go over, under, and practically through obstacles. And most vaults are essentially levers. The first kind of lever I want to talk about is seen in the Kong vault. This kind of lever is called the second class lever. And the way it works is it's the fulcrum attached to another lever. When you push up on that lever, that lever is going to go up. So in the Kong vault, when you push up on the table, you're going to go up as well. And that's going to get the tracer over the table. The next kind of lever I want to talk about is called the first class lever. And the way that works is the fulcrum is actually in the center of the lever. So when you push down on one end of the lever, the other side comes up, as seen in the gate vault bend down and push on this and bend my back, my legs come up. Now at this point we also see the second class lever as in the Kong vault, where my hand is actually the fulcrum. Alright class, here's a question for you. Try to identify all the axes of rotation and any other physics properties that are at work in this flip. Hey Mr. Gross, 